When we first clasp eyes on a teardrop or square drop camper, it's generally the teardrop that gets us in because of the way it looks, it's swoopy lines and everything like that. But there's some small differences between packaging in the teardrop and the square drop that could make a whole lot of difference with how we live in them. And today, we're gonna to have a look at those. So stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Daryl and welcome to the channel. Well, we're out with the camper. We're, we've set up and for me with this camper now, that means we've pulled up in an area that's reasonably flat. We can level it off with some leveling jacks if we need. Uh, camper's still attached to the vehicle. I've put out the 270 degree awning, couple of minutes there. I've taken the Weber barbecue out of the front box, folded down the uh, fold down table at the side, put it on there, connected it up to the gas bottle next door, and we're good to go. The fridge is already cold. The batteries have been charging all the way here from the vehicle. Um, I'm having a non-alcohol gin and tonic because I've got a drive loader on and they're not too bad. <laughs> I have had a lot worse. But today I thought we'd have a look at the differences between a teardrop and a square drop camper with usability. You know, it's, it's, all, it's always said that the teardrop is the good looking sister. Uh, but nowadays, uh, an on-road teardrop is a good looking thing. An off-road square drop is a good looking thing too, for different reasons. Now, traditionally, we look at a teardrop camper as the on-road version of these types of campers and the square drop as the off-road, the more macho off-road things. However, I don't think the square drop lends itself to an on-road version as much as the teardrop does. Uh, whilst you see some teardrops being towed by hot rods and they look really nice, lowered with big big wide wheels and everything, uh, the square drop really needs some chunky off-road rubber lifted up and you know making the most of its stance. But um, at the end of the day, it's the chassis that you've got underneath it, not the box, that makes it an off-road or on-road camper. You can get away with much lighter construction in an on-road camper um, compared to an off-road camper, and especially if you're going to hammer this thing on corrugations and the like. So let's start with the differences between a teardrop and square drop. Um, some of those come into play in the kitchen area, the galley area. With a square drop you generally have a hatch that comes up, gives you weather protection if you stop by the side of the road to prepare food. And the same can be said with the full length rear galley doors on a teardrop. There's a lot of teardrops now that are made with a half door that doesn't wrap all the way around. And the problem with those is whilst they give you a lighter door that's probably easier to construct, at the end of the day they don't give you this weather protection when you do stop at the side of the road. So if you're looking at a teardrop that, you know, is really nice and it's got a, the wrapped around rear and the galley door is a half or three quarter size, just make sure when you open it up that it does give you some weather protection because most of them won't. Um, and that's a big selling point with these things. Even if, even if you do have the 270 degree awning, it is nice to have this door over the top, especially, and you will do it when you stop at the side of the road to prepare some lunch, make a cup of coffee or the things like that. With the galley on these, and this is where it starts to get different. With my camper, the bench top in the galley runs full width of the camper and is approximately 600 deep. At the back of that, we've got a bulkhead that goes back up to the roof of the camper. And coming forward of that bulkhead, we've got uh, storage. Uh, and in that, we've got pots and pans and plates and things like that. It's a really nice storage compartment. But part of the bench space is underneath this storage area. With the teardrop, because of the swoopy lines on it, this upper storage, we're actually pushing it forward. And as we push it forward, everything inside the, the camper comes forward too. So we're taking away room, and you'll see what I mean when we get inside this camper, uh, the differences that it can make to how you live. I really like this. This works really well for us. Conversely, I have seen some really nice teardrop galleys, like 
they're really, really nice. But it comes down to when you're cooking too, because if I was to cook in this square drop camper, because it's all within the camper with just this hatch, any smells here would permeate its way throughout the camper, which, which isn't fun. It, it's not nice to be inside a camper with all your cooking smells and things like that. With the teardrop, they're a little bit better than the square drop in that regard, because generally the hatch on the teardrop hinges where the kitchen ends and this this bulkhead would be a lot further forward so you do tend to have a lot less enclosed area to cook in um, i'm not saying that your cooking smells will not permeate its way through the cabin but um, you've got a little bit less chance of it happening so you can see with both teardrop and square drop there's fours and against the other difference between my camper and a lot of teardrops and some square drops is that I don't have a fridge at the back of the car because of this uh, cutback section here. So for me, I have to walk around to the fridge, grab whatever I need, and then wander back, which isn't a real issue. We're probably talking, you know, two and a half meters or something. At home, I know that I have to walk to the fridge I have to walk to the cupboard that we put our plates on and grab everything and bring it all back to a central area. This is very similar. And for my camper, I don't have drawers as such. Um, I'm not a real fan of drawers. They weigh a lot and they just get uh, cluttered. I'm quite a fan of these types of soft cutlery uh, hangers. And that just hangs off the 270 degree awning and that gives us everything there. And when I get home, I can just take this inside the house, wash everything up, repack it, we're good to go. And with regards to spices and the like, I buy all of my spices in these plastic bags, sealed plastic bags, um, and they all just live there. Uh, and you can have a whole heap of them. So it's, it's trying to get kind of a hiking mentality, I suppose. Things that are light, easy to pack, don't take up a lot of room. But today for lunch, I'm gonna have korma halloumi skewer, um, which we need some red pepper. Just need to cut that up into squares. Some cauliflower, we'll just cut the florets off that. Some good quality halloumi. Before we do anything with that, just going to get some korma paste. Put all of this in here. just get a nice skewer. I like the metal ones because they hold together quite well. And for lunch, I think that'll do. So we just need to turn our gas on. Weber. It was made comment to me that this Weber doesn't open fully, and I do realise that. However, these Webers cook best with the lid down. So you open them up, stick whatever you want in them, close the lid, and lift the lid up to turn them or whatever like that. So we'll just wait for that to heat up, 
and we'll put our lunch on. And how's that going? We're basically ready to start cooking. There's two versions of this Weber BBQ. One has a higher lid and a temperature gauge, the other one doesn't. Um, this is a really good thing because you can get quite good roasts and everything in. So we'll grab that skewer. Just stick that, stick that in. And these flat skewers, metal skewers, are quite good because they don't burn because they're metal, but because they're flat, they fit quite well with the lid down. And for those that haven't seen it before, this is my iTech World 300 watt solar blanket. And that connects up to the external solar plug and I've got a dual solar plug here so I can have two blankets so if I buy another one of those I've got 600 watts an external blanket and how is lunch going In my camper, I've got fairly deep clove storage, and there's one for each of us. And these IKEA bags fit into each one, but you can see it's, it's relatively deep. The downside, as I said, of pushing these cupboards forward, if this was a, a teardrop design, would mean that we'd lose that window next to the door. There just wouldn't be enough room for it. But the flow on from that is, a lot of the time I like sitting in front of one of these windows. If we've got a bunker down for whatever reason in this cabin, we can do that. And part of the reason why I haven't put another door on this cabin is that if both of us are in here, I can sit with my back here and my partner can sit there. Which means that you don't have to lay down all the time. But something I've noticed in a lot of designs of campers is that they're spruiking the amount of storage they have in the camper but the cupboards finish where this window finish a lot of the time or a little bit further back what that means is you don't have the options of places to sit which i wouldn't like let's say you wanted to design a teardrop camper but you wanted all of the space that the square drop camper gave you you've got to make your teardrop camper longer. That's all there is to it. And yes, you will forego some of those gorgeous curves because you'll end up with a flat section um, between the front and the rear, but you can still have your teardrop. It just needs to be longer to get the space that a square drop camper has inside. That's just how it is. But if you're looking to buy a camper that's already made, whether it's from a manufacturer or a home builder, Look at the amount of wall space you've got to sit against. It's quite critical. And if your cupboards come to there, that means you've only got that amount of space to live. And yes, your legs will go underneath the cupboards and everything, but if you've got a bunker down inside, it is much nicer to be able to lean up against a wall. And as I said, that's the reason we didn't put the door here. It means I can lean up against a wall that's not cold like the glass door is because the glass door, if it gets cold outside, it can get quite cold. And it also puts paid to some of the discussion on the internet with regards to insulation in walls. The roof and the front of this camper is fully insulated. The walls is 18 millimeter solid ply. Um, with the amount of, once all the, the door and the window is cut out there isn't a lot more to insulate so in my camper in my part of the world i don't need any more insulation than this and frankly it wouldn't do me any good anyway because there's just not enough of it now as i said there's no perfect camper but when you start to get down to the nitty-gritty there's some living differences between a square drop and a teardrop they aren't insurmountable but sometimes you've got to choose whether you want 
um, design over practicality, I suppose. But that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.